Ave Maria, welcome back to No Apologies. As we continue with our Eucharistic series, we want to begin by looking at the scriptural basis for the teaching of the Eucharist. And this is going to be broken up into three main points. First, we'll look at the Old Testament and see that the Eucharist was actually foreshadowed. Second, we'll look in the New Testament and we'll see exactly where did our Lord teach this teaching of the true presence and then see how later he fulfilled that teaching at the Last Supper. And then lastly, we'll go look at the writings of St. Paul and see how he and the first Christians looked upon the Eucharist. But today we're going to begin with the Old Testament. And we want to look at three Old Testament types or signs which were prefigurements or foreshadows of the Eucharist. And the first is the Paschal Lamb. In the book of Exodus, chapter 12, we read about God's command to Moses and Aaron to take and slaughter the unblemished land. And then they were to wipe his blood on the doorpost of the Israelites as a sign to the Lord that when he passed through Egypt that night to slay the firstborn, that he was to pass by their homes. But they then were to cook the lamb and they were to eat it and with their loins girded, with their sandals on and their staff in their hand because they were to begin their journey to the promised land. So the Paschal Lamb was both a, a victim, which was slaughtered, to save the lives of the firstborns of Israel, and b, it was eaten as their nourishment as they begin their journey to the Promised Land. So this prefigures the Eucharist, where we have the same victim, Jesus, who was offered up on the cross to save us from death. It's also consumed in the Eucharist to be our spiritual nourishment for our journey to our Promised Land, Heaven. And the second Old Testament symbol we want to look at is the manna in the desert, the bread of heaven which the Israelites ate as they made their way through to the promised land. If you look in the book of Exodus, chapter 16, we hear about the description of the manna. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning, dew lay round about the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as hoarfrost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And the people of Israel ate the manna forty years, till they came to a habitable land. And they ate the manna till they came to the border, of the land of Cana. So the bread from heaven was their nourishment and their sustenance for their 40 year trek through the deserts. And once they re reached the promised land, the manna ceased to fall from heaven. So too, the Eucharist again is our spiritual nourishment and our sustenance as we pilgrimage through this veil of tears to heaven, but which will also cease once our journey is complete. And the third Old Testament type that we want to look at is the Ark of the Covenant. Now, we've seen before how the Ark of the Covenant is a type of Our Lady because Our Lady carried in her womb our Lord, just as the Ark of the Covenant carried within it the three items which were per, per, per prefigurements of our, of our Lord. We had the written Word of God, the Ten Commandments, which was a prefigurement of the living Word of God made flesh, our Lord. There was the jar of manna, or the bread from heaven, was a prefigurement of our Lord, who too called himself the living bread come down from heaven. And we have the rod of Aaron, which was the sign of the true priesthood of the old covenant. It was a prefigurement of Christ's true and eternal everlasting high priesthood. So, it's the Ark of the Covenant can be seen as a type of Our Lady, but it also can easily be seen as a foreshadowing of the tabernacles in the Catholic churches which is where we reserve the Eucharist. Because just as the Ark of the Covenant contained within it these prefigurements of Christ, so too the tabernacles in our churches contain their fulfillment, the true presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. So we have these three prefigurements of the Eucharist found in the Old Testament, the Paschal Lamb, the Manna and the Desert, and the Ark of the Covenant, given to us by divine providence, as foreshadows as what was to come in the new covenant of Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining me here on No Apologies. Ave Maria. Mm -hmm.